the Middle East. The iMovie will be divided into three different groups. Culture, which will be done by me. Honor Killing will be done by Omar. And Sex Trafficking will be done by Luis. Some of the countries in the Middle East include Algeria, Iran, Israel, Jordan, Morocco, Saudi Arabia, and Turkey. Next, we'll overview culture. Islam originated in the Middle East. Moreover, all Muslims are expected to observe the five pillars of Islam. All Muslims are expected to pray five times a day, accept Muhammad as a God's prophet, make a pilgrimage to Mecca, and fast during the month of fasting. Under traditional Islamic law, child marriages were allowed. A girl could be forced into marriage by a qualified male relation. Women could only marry at a time. Men were allowed multiple times. Leaving the house required husband's blessing. Her contact with persons outside of the family were similarly subjected to restrictions at her husband's wishes. The next topic will be on honor killings in the Middle East and will be presented by Omar de la Cruz. It will be covering current issues in the Middle East. The area of focus is honor killing, rapes, and assaults. Honor killing is defined as the homicide of a member of a family by other members. Due to the perpetrator's belief that the victim has brought shame or dishonor upon the family or has violated the principles of community or religion. 
Most common causes of honor killing are refusing to enter an arranged marriage, being in a relationship that is disapproved by their family, having sex outside marriage, becoming the victim of rape, dressing in ways which are deemed inappropriate, engaging in non-heterosexual relations, or renouncing a faith. The distinctive nature of honor killings is the collective nature of the crime. Many members of an extended family plan the act together, sometimes through a formal family cancel. Another significant feature is the connection of honor killings to the control of women's behavior. Additional characteristics of honor killings is that the perpetrators often don't face negative stigma within their communities because their behavior is seen as justified. In most countries, data on honor killings is not collected systematically, and many of these killings are reported by family members as suicides or accidents and register as such. However, murder is not the only form of honor crime. Other crimes such as acid attacks, abduction, disfigurements, and beatings occur as well. According to Human Rights Watch defines honor killings as follows. Honor killings are acts of revenge, usual death committed by male family members against female family members who are held to have brought dishonor upon the family. A woman can be targeted by individuals within her family for a variety of reasons, including but not limited to refusing to enter into an arranged marriage, being the victim of a assault, sexual assault, seeking a divorce, even from an abusive husband, committing adultery. The mere perception that a woman has behaved in a way that dishonors her family is sufficient to trigger an attack on her. One of the most recent and controversial honor killings is of a Pakistani model, Kandel Balak. Balak was known as the Kim Kardashian of the Middle East. She had recently become a social media celebrity in recent months. A day after the murder, the brother had confessed to strangling her for family honor because she had posted shameful pictures on Facebook. At a press conference organized by the police early Sunday, Wasam said, yes, of course, I strangled her. She was on the ground while our parents were asleep on the rooftop. It was around 10.45 p.m. when I gave her a tablet and then I killed her. The next video highlights the brutality of the incident. Pakistani model and social media celebrity was murdered in an honor killing over the weekend. Time.com explains here, Kandil Balak was strangled to death by her brother in an apparent honor killing. According to the police, parents told investigators that one of her brothers strangled her while she, while she slept at the family's home. She had argued with her brother Wasim earlier that day over money issues and provocative photos she had posted. Balak, whose real name was Fozia Azim, was known for being a social media celebrity who challenged conservative norms. She drew criticism recently when she posted photos of herself with a Muslim cleric. They drank soda and smoked cigarettes during Ramadan's daylight hours, which is a no-no for the fundamentalists. The pictures uh, led the cleric, Mufti Kavi, to be removed from his position on a Ramadan committee. Uh, Balak sought protection earlier this month after receiving anonymous death threats. Uh, and then her brother went on to kill her. Uh, people actually referred to her as the Pakistani Kim Kardashian. So this is like the level of social media celebrity that she was in that context and in that country. And uh, again, she's dead now. So right before I came on air, there was some more breaking news in relation to this story. Uh, her brother said that he was, quote, proud to kill her.
This concludes part two of the video. Eastern laws and cultures do not recognize certain forms of human trafficking as being in fact trafficking. Because of this, victims of trafficking are often not protected in the Middle East. Instead, victims of human trafficking are often punished because they are viewed as illegal immigrants. Forms of human trafficking in the Middle East include domestic servitude and forced labor, child trafficking, and at last, sex trafficking. A controversial issue when dealing with human trafficking and slavery in the Middle East and around the world is slave redemption, since it is difficult to find ways of releasing slaves from their buyers without more violence and turmoil, some organizations have resorted to buying slaves for their freedom. Many advocates of ending the slave trade claim that buying slaves from their owners encourages the demand for slaves, therefore it is argued that redeeming slaves actually contributes to the problem and is not alleviated. This is an incredible difficult controversy because it weighs the lives of current victims of human trafficking with the hope that not feeding the demand will save people from becoming victims of trafficking in the near future. However, even when there are laws against sex trafficking, the laws are not respected or enforced. In Israel, there are laws against sex trafficking, yet the Israeli government and law enforcement agencies have largely neglected to enforce these laws. Therefore, not only legislating laws, but also enforcing the laws is important for change in sex trafficking in the Middle East. Today, there are many international laws and organizations working to prevent and stop human trafficking that hold traffickers accountable. For example, international laws and treaties such as the Convention on the Rights of the Child and the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. Some Middle Eastern governments are doing their part to stop this problem, while other states are not doing anything to prevent human trafficking. A big percentage of the immigrants who are trafficked into the Middle East end up in brothels. Uh, brothels in the Middle East force girls to take in customers without protection and charge extra for the pleasure to not use one. Not to mention they heavily control the woman and her life in order to prevent any loss in profits and secure their investments. In addition, there are movements trying to stop brothels in the Middle Eastern countries such as this one. The following video shows the type of women who go into the business of prostitution and the reasons why they do it. Everyone knew the most popular sex tourism spots. A Google search for Dubai sex tourism turns up discussions of numerous downtown hotels and nightclubs. When I arrived at one, it seemed at first like any other nightclub. But it didn't take long before I was propositioned. How much you want? I played along. One thousand. One thousand? Yeah. How much I think let me hear about five hundred? But the women's faces I saw in the bathroom from China, Ghana, Ethiopia, Morocco, Uzbekistan, these were not the broken spirits I expected to meet. Instead, Dubai's sex workers refer to themselves as businesswomen dealing their profitable flesh by phone and through clubs like this. I took photos amazed by how invisible I had become. Their minds were elsewhere, applying lipstick, counting cash, dialing numbers, adjusting bras. Price depends on nationality. Chinese are the cheapest, around 150 US dollars. Then Africans and Eastern Europeans. Middle Eastern women fetch the highest amount, up to 1,000 US dollars per night. Many sex workers were lured here by false promises of legitimate jobs like childcare or waitressing. Once they realize how much they can make in the clubs, the fast abundant cash in selling sex is hard to turn down. It seemed unbelievably naive. I couldn't comprehend how selling your body could be a rational choice. But Maria insisted that she was not being forced. A man from Tunisia who propositioned me told me that every woman in Dubai has a price, and many here can afford to pay it. 
John, a former American serviceman who I met in a nightclub, explained how he has seen women seduced by the cash. Imagine a girl who's been in a bad economic situation all her life, and now you offer her everything. That's intoxicating to them, you know? At least for a while, until the, the thrill is gone. Until the thrill is gone, she's gonna be like, sucking that up. Until she figure out she sold herself, and she get that feeling on the inside where she has nothing left, she's gonna be like, damn, how did I get to this place? You know, but that's a, a time for that to happen. Until that time happens, this concludes our documentary. Too. At this moment, we will be answering any questions in regards to the presentation. Thank you for your time, and I hope you enjoyed our presentation.